Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of St. Margaret Mary, Where Are They Now? We hope you are enjoying the episodes you have seen thus far. Uh, we are thrilled to have our uh, guest today, and it's gonna take us all the way to Palm Springs, California, and to introduce our guest is Mike Molina. Mike? Thanks, Matt. Uh, from 1992 to around 2010, we had a, a, a very dedicated and terrific uh, music director, music minister, piano player at our parish who really touched virtually every one of our weekend masses at one point or another during his time with us at St. Margaret Mary's. And it really is a pleasure uh, today to have with us our good friend, Brent Reynolds. Welcome, Brent. Nice to see you. Good to see all of you. So Brent came to us, uh, as I said, around 1992 to play piano for uh, the 930 choir. We seem to have had a problem with keeping our piano players. I don't know why, <laughs> but it, we would get one and they would decide to leave. So uh, we were blessed with uh, having Brent join us and he stuck around for nearly 20 years. So he has certainly been a, a wonderful, wonderful friend over these years. Brett, why don't you begin by chatting with us a little bit about, about church music? It's, it's kind of in your blood, isn't it? You grew up with church musicians, and this isn't something that just you've stumbled upon. It's part of a family history, isn't it? Yes, my mom was a church choir director and uh, music director at the church. She was my, my dad was a pastor, and she was his music director, we had a choir on Sunday mornings and an orchestra, a volunteer orchestra on Sunday nights, because we had church on Sunday night, and choir rehearsal was Wednesday night. And she would like teach a string class so that she could put the strings into the string section in her orchestra. And she taught piano, she taught me piano, and my brother and sister, and we learned all the instruments so that we could do different instruments in the orchestra. And that's kind of where I learned to sing, play, I played drum, I played trumpet, I played oboe, flute, bassoon. So that's how I kind of got into it. And your journey to the University of Southern California, when you were at USC, was it your plan to continue in church music? Is that what you wanted to do? Yeah, I had finished my master's in piano performance at uh, SUNY Binghamton, uh, State University of New York, and then came out to Los Angeles and was thinking of a doctorate. And after one semester, I went, yeah, master's is enough. And um, just started working. And I had like, uh, I think when I started with you, I still had two church jobs and two temple jobs, plus teaching piano four days a week at the South Bay Conservatory there in uh, Palos Verdes. So I was just working so much, uh, I just kind of gave it up. And well, I, I, we're happy that you're giving up education meant that you were going to dedicate more time into church work. Uh, you came to St. Margaret Mary around 1992. Um, what, do you remember, what were your first memories, your first uh, thoughts about our parish when you arrived? That, that, we, that the eight o'clock mass was way too early since I lived near, I lived in Silver Lake. <laughs> we had to rehearse at like seven or something like that. It was like way too early. But no, we had so much fun and I couldn't understand why you guys were just great to me. Um, I couldn't understand why people would leave. Uh, you just treated me like royalty. And obviously we just instantly meshed. And I forget it wasn't too long before I started writing psalms for you guys and masses for you guys. And you let me not just play piano, but you let me sing with you. And I don't know, it just didn't take long before we were a happy family. Yeah, Brent reminds me that we, we changed the mass schedule in the year 2000. So his, uh, his first uh, um, few years were with us when we were the 830 choir, not the 930 choir. And we did, we got together at 730, 745. And they were, some, some of those Sunday mornings were tough mornings, especially for you coming all the way from past Los Angeles. Uh, the Psalms are something that, for those of us who remember those years, we absolutely loved, and you did. You wrote, out of the 150 psalms, I think you probably wrote at least 50 or 60 wonderful responsorial psalms that we sang, oh my gosh, for at least 10, 12 years of the time that you were here. Why, what, do you remember why you began writing psalms, Brent? What was the, 
what happened that you started that mission and uh, and then becoming they becoming so much part of the of the fabric of our liturgical life at the parish? I kind of don't remember, except that you know you guys had a sound, and I think we all bonded over that uh, second chapter of Acts, which is a contemporary Christian group from the seventies, eighties, sixties, seventies, eighties, and we all loved that sound and. Seems like we struggled to find you guys struggled to find psalm responsorial psalms that fit you, and I knew the sound you liked, and I think I wrote one. Sorry, somebody's trying to text me. Um, I wrote you one, and kind of like in that style, because I knew the harmonies. You you guys just had that good harmony, and you liked it, so I wrote another one, and you liked it, and we just kept going. I mean, I would just bring them in on Sunday morning. I mean, it wasn't like we rehearsed them for weeks before. I would just bring them in. You guys just latched onto them, and we would sing them that morning, and it just became a thing, and I would, you know, just kept doing it, and then, then I started writing masses, and then it culminated with me writing that Requiem in 2001 for the, would it, it would have been the 11 o'clock choir, so. I remember that well. So other than our choir, um, as I said earlier, you branched out into a variety of other masses at, on our Sunday schedule. Um, what was the move? How did you get to the 11 o'clock bar where you eventually became the director of the 11 o'clock bar? Oh gosh, well there had been, I had, let me see, I was <laughs> there through, <laughs> through quite a few directors. Um, and I think it was when Lori Marie Rios um, left to take another position somewhere and I think that was when I finally stepped up to the plate and Father Thompson um, kind of took a chance on me, even though I had been a choir director in uh, full time in two other churches before I moved to Los Angeles. Um, I think that's kind of how it happened. But I had, I'd kind of slowly, and you helped me just, uh, you know, I started with the, with your guitar mass and then I started doing weddings and funerals. And then I took the Saturday afternoon mass. And then I took, I think the 11 o'clock was next. Mm -hmm. I think that was the culmination. Yeah. And, you directed the, and you directed the 11 o'clock choir for a number of years, I know. 10 that. years, 10 years, I believe, yeah. You had and, then our, and then our meters mass. That was the last one. And, and then you did the 1232, that's right. So Spanish mass, they taught me how to sing in Spanish. God bless them, they were so patient. I remember there for a few years, you did 8, 9, 30, 11, and 12, 30. It was a, it was a crazy schedule. And I also recall a couple Christmases, the day after Christmas, where you said, that's it, I'm out of here. <laughs> it was so much. That was kind of one of the reasons I moved to Palm Springs and some retired, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank God you kept coming back to us, though. That was the best part of it. Um, yeah, the 11 o'clock choir was an important part of your, I think, legacy at the parish. You had some terrific volunteer singers who were with you for a lot of years. You got that choir up to about 30 or 40 members, and they provided such a wonderful offering to the parish. And, and continuing the treasury of that more traditional music of the church's history, which I think was, was terrific. Um, Talk a little bit about that, Brent. I think I remember when you came in, one of your goals was to fully immerse yourself in what Catholic music was about, uh, something that, you know, you certainly didn't grow up in, but you were very interested in learning the ritual and the history of Catholic music. Um, how important was that for you? Very important. This was my first Catholic church job, and I remember distinctly we were having a conversation about, I think, some Sally Fields movie, and they were playing Blessed Assurance, and you didn't know Blessed Assurance. And I said, how could you not know Blessed Assurance? And you said something about, well, do you know Salve Regina? And I was like, well, no, I don't know Salve Regina. <laughs> so it was one of those conversations where, you know, the two worlds collide, the Protestant and the Catholic world. And I, I must say, this new music issue, and you guys have the same music issue we do, there's a lot of Protestant hymns coming in the music <laughs> issue. But anyway, um, so no, it was very important. I didn't know gospel acclamation from a Eucharistic acclamation when I started St. Margaret Mary's and um, the guitar group. I mean, you know, I was with you for a good many years before I took on any other responsibilities. You were the training ground 
And so it was very important for me to learn because I started doing weddings and I was by myself. I was up at the organ with the microphone at the organ. Um, so I had to know the, I had to know the liturgy. I had to know these things. So it was very important to me. And um, like we talked about, it was very much step by step. It was under your tutelage um, before I took on any other masses. And then I started the afternoon, the Saturday afternoon mass. And then we eventually built up to a trio and, um, and then culminating with the 11 o'clock choir and I was writing masses for them. I was arranging um, anthems for them. We did all kinds of music, but I, I kept it appropriate. It was always to the uh, readings of the day. I tried not to get too far. Some people, you know, and everyone has their different tastes. Sometimes you do something classical and people didn't like it. Something, sometimes I did something that seemed too Baptisty, and surprisingly a lot of people really did like it and I was surprised, <laughs> but um, no, it was very important to me. And, um, but people were always very patient and you forgot to mention I was organist. And remember Herky Jerky? I was a Herky Jerky organist. What does that mean? We got that one letter. That one time, the lady oh. said, I played, I played Herky Jerky. <laughs> well, you know, we always have, um, St. Margaret Mary parishioners uh, have, a, have a great reputation of letting their, their parish know their feelings about, especially the way we worship. I guess you moved around a little too much. Got very few of those letters. People were always very, very kind, very patient, very, very loving to me all throughout the years, I must say. And what do you think, Brent, about our, our, now that you've been exposed to this, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more in a bit about what you've been doing since then. You continue to serve in a Catholic parish. What, I mean, now you have, wow, 25 years, 27 and 28 years of experience of Catholic liturgy. What is it about our ritual that attracts you the most? Like you've gone through Christmas and Holy Weeks and you see the way we marry and bury people. What is it about the Catholic ritual that, that interests or intrigues you the most? The constancy, definitely, and the reverence, definitely, um, two major things. Um, I like that you can go to any church and you know where you are in the Mass, you know what's going on, um, whereas in a Protestant church, things are always different. Um, you know, even in the same Lutheran church from here to there, things can be different. Um, but Catholic Church, you know where you are, you know what's going on, and, and you feel at home because it's almost the same. I mean, the music can be different, the mass can be a different, uh, the mass music can be a different feel, but you know what's going on and you know where you are in the mass. But the reverence, definitely. Um, I like the seasons. Um, I like Lent and Advent. Um, I don't mean to dis disparage a Protestant church, but it seems like the whole year kind of feels like one kind of big thing but I like the different seasons. Um, I love Stations of the Cross during Lent, um, Advent. Advent and Lent are my favorite seasons for some reason. Must be the purple, I don't know. <laughs> That's great. For a lot of you may not know also that concurrent with the time that, uh, that Brent has spent as a Catholic musician, a musician in Catholic churches, he's had a long career working uh, for uh, uh, people within the Jewish faith and Jewish synagogues, a number of synagogues, uh, both here in LA County as well as in his home now in Palm Springs. I'm sure there are some similarities that you see, Brent, in ritual between the synagogue rites and the Catholic rites, aren't there? Oh, yes. Well, it, uh, Catholicism, a lot of the rites grew out from the Jewish rites. Um, the Holy Holy is uh, said in the same part of the service on the Sabbath. Um, can't think of the word right now in Hebrew, and I know it, but it said three times, da, 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 Lord of hosts. Uh, but anyway, it's, uh, that's, um, so they have a distinct liturgy that's uh, very similar because, yeah, the roots are there, so. Absolutely true. So you moved to Palm Springs about uh, 10 years, uh, 10, 12 years ago or so. What have, what have you been doing since then musically? Uh, where have been the, the different places of worship that you have ministered? Well, I came out here to be at a Episcopal church and they were in transition and they had um, uh, interim and things just didn't work out, which was funny because that's the church I belong to. But um, I 
Um, I quit that job after less than a year and went back to Roman Catholic Church. Um, and then I just kept going to the Episcopal Church and volunteering in the choir because they have a really fantastic choir. I've been singing that for years. In fact, I just finally quit that choir a year ago because <laughs> I'm taking on so many responsibilities at the Catholic Church. Does that sound familiar? I started off with one mass and then two masses, three masses. Now I'm up to four masses here at this Catholic Church now. I'm at um, St. Francis of Assisi in La Quinta. It's the most beautiful church out here. You've been to it. It's a gorgeous church with great acoustics. Um, it's got a very good organ, but match that with the acoustics. And it's just a magnificent organ. And um, I'm very blessed to be there. I have never been the choir director. I have not directed that choir once. I have not told them <laughs> that I am available. Um, we lost our choir director. She retired last year. And I did not put my head in the ring to be the director. I have not directed any choirs since moving out here. I just, I will, uh, when somebody's sick, like at another church, or I will do a rehearsal for them, but I'm just um, pianist and organist only, and I like it that way. So, and yes, I'm at the synagogue. I play for a congregation that meets at Sun City out in Palm Desert, um, and they are lovely to me. We are meeting right now, still during the COVID epidemic, we are meeting via Zoom. So I, this is where I play, this is why I put this up there um, for a little backdrop for them. So um, that's what I'm doing. It is a beautiful church and I'm sure you'd be very happy if St. Mark and Mary Christians would pop by and say hello to you after mass. Oh, they do. <laughs> a couple, couple, three, four times a year, I come down from the balcony and open up the door and I just never know who's gonna be there. It's very nice, they do that. And St. Francis of Assisi Church is a beautiful church with uh, beautiful artwork, very Italian inside, and it's, um, it's a great worship space. So if you find yourself in the Palm Springs area, La Quinta area, and you're looking for a church to go to on Sunday or Saturday night, give St. Francis a try and say hello to Brent while you are there. Brent, I, I'm just curious, what um, as you're continuing your ministry, especially in a Catholic setting, are there moments during your time now at St. Francis that you're reminded of your St. Margaret Mary years, certain songs or, or touchstones that you think, oh my gosh, this is so St. Margaret Mary. We'd love to hear those. Oh, every week, the responsorial psalm. When, you know, when I see the text, I go, oh, I want to do, you know, I want, I want to hear you guys sing the psalm that I wrote for you, you know, you know, taste and see. Um, oh my gosh, I got a few. This is the day. The classic. Um, Lord, let us see your kindness. If today you hear his voice, my soul is thirsting for you. Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll text you sometimes and say, oh, our favorite one's coming up this week. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> true. So, so yeah, uh, death, it's, it's usually the Psalms. Uh, sometimes I almost cry when I see one coming up. It's like, oh, I want to hear them sing that so bad. But yeah, that's it. It's the Psalms. Always remind me of uh, St. Mark and Mary's. That's beautiful. And the same thing happens to us. We'll be sitting in the pews and we'll hear a psalm. And Teresa and I will look at each other saying, oh, we know a better one, which only compels us to remind ourselves over and over again that we have to go in and record some of those psalms so that uh, we can keep them you know, in posterity so that people can continue to hear them because they were beautiful, beautiful psalms and they really were a living contribution that you provided to the parish. Oh, and another reminder um, at my parish is um, Jack Thompson, Father Pat Thompson's brother attends our parish. So I see him about at least once a month. He doesn't go to my mass, but I'll see him coming out or going in or in passing and <sighs> I shake his hand and think of Father Pat and just another time, sometimes I just leave him and I want to cry, think of Father yeah. Pat. You and Father Pat had a very special relationship. I think, uh, you know, sometimes you, those of us who see on passing on Sunday, uh, don't really know that Monday through Friday, you develop this relationship with your clergy, don't you? Sometimes good, sometimes not so good. But the reality is, for the time that you were there, while you, while you first showed up at, at St. Margaret Mary under Bishop Joe, the bulk of your time was under Father Pat. And you two developed a, not only a friendship, but a real working relationship with each other. What are your memories of him? He was just, he was just a brilliant man, really funny. I, 
I went to his, um, he was honored by that Santa Clarita College thing at the Jonathan Club downtown in Figueroa. And then you, the next day you'd see him out on Echelon Avenue talking to a migrant worker in Spanish. You know, he just, he just did the gamut. And then during the day you'd walk into sacristy and he said, oh, I was reading this Latin book that was translated into German last night. And the man was just brilliant. And just, <laughs> and you know, just all over the place. But he was funny and brilliant and sweet and just always kind. Uh, it was just very, very rare when he was having a bad day. He was just always so sweet and kind. And yeah, he was just so nice to me and so supportive of the music program always. And I just really appreciated him when I heard he passed. It was just a horrible day. And I, yeah, think of him often. Yeah, as do we. He was an incredible, incredible pastor and good friend and um, a phenomenal priest. Phenomenal priest, that's for sure. Well, Brent, I, I re really appreciate the time that you spent with us today talking about uh, your life and reminiscing about St. Margaret Mary. Uh, they, every time I think back to the, the years that we were together, they were just such fantastic years of providing music uh, to a terrific congregation that sang along and fully and actively participated. They were great years and what made them great was collaborating and working, especially with people like you, Brent, who made the years uh, so, so special. What, um, what are your, your, your lasting, a, a final message to, to your friends at St. Margaret Mary? What would you like to say? Oh, oh, um, that, um, looking forward to a new normal. They talk about going back to normal. I'm looking forward to a new normal, um, where we don't go back to our old ways of maybe just shuffling into church and coming in with our eyes half asleep and waiting until maybe the song that we like comes and then we sing along. Let's make it a new normal where we go into church. It, it's not already there, it's a privilege to be there. We come in, we start singing from the very first note that's sung and I think we're gonna appreciate a lot more things now. Um, maybe that parking lot won't be so bad. Uh, the things that used to upset us, maybe they won't upset us so much. And it's going to be a new, better normal. Brent Reynolds, the music minister, always hoping for uh, more singing. That's fantastic. Thank you, Brent. Thanks for the time you spent with us. Uh, you are an important part of St. Margaret Mary's history. You are always, always welcome, my friend, in whatever Letters. capacity. Uh, we miss you like crazy. Oh, I miss you like the dick. If anything that would get Teresa and I singing again would be if we knew that you were there and we we certainly join you for any time, anywhere. Uh, thank you very much, folks, for uh, watching. We'll hand this back over to uh, Matt Johnson and look forward to seeing you at the next episode. Very much. Thank you, Brent. It was so great to have you. So great to see you again. Uh, if you are enjoying our series, don't forget to click subscribe on our YouTube page so that you can uh, get an email whenever our new uh, videos are loaded up uh, each and every week in our series. So thanks again for being with us and we'll see you next time.